And I'm gonna be bringing back some stuff for the series. Um, we had a loss recently. That's all I'm gonna say is that we've lost the horror, um, that more real. You know, the Goosebumps podcast through some some things I really just don't want to get into. It kind of hurts my heart, but um, you know, some things you just can't foresee happening, and it happened, and you know, sometimes it happens. And anyways, that's it for this um for this introduction. Let's get into the, the reaction. Today was my favorite day of the week. It was Sunday, the last shift I worked before my routine weekend began. I work as a private security guard for a company that is contracted by the government. It's not the worst job, but it's far from enlightening. I work a split shift. This wasn't always the case, but ever since we lost Lopez two weeks ago, we've been rotating to keep the ship covered. This place requires constant security detail, or so I'm told. So once a week, all the guards will take an overnight shift. Kind of sucks, but at least they're shifted. And the lack of people here means I can use a bathroom in peace. Nights are weird here, as the amount of foot traffic is almost non-existent, if any. I learned the hard way, you better have something to do or you're in for a long night. During the day, we get your standard bunch of men and women, all dressed in high-end business attire, which I always found kind of weird seeing as we're in the freaking desert. Now occasionally, we do get an oddball visitor that seems out of place, but they're always accompanied by one or two of the suited men and women. That we can never actually see them. They always have the visitors in a cage, and those cages are covered with a well-secured tarp. These visitors were always addressed as the package. Sometimes you can see the cages rattle, or sometimes noises would come out of them. But I mean, God, all the sounds. During training, our boss Chuck always told us, don't acknowledge, don't question, and don't get in their way. We're here to keep out intruders and make sure bait or at the same point that you know stays closed at all times. I'm not sure why all the bait doors were numbered in Spanish, but so be it. The 51st bait door was never to be opened without government clearance. I was starting to notice weird things happen here at night. I mean, really weird things. Sometimes I hear strange noises when I take over the post. Sometimes the overhead lights go out, followed by an eerie frequency. Once in a while, there's this insufferable squeaking sound that comes from the 51st bay. It almost sounds like wet shoes on the lower line of the floor. I go to look through underneath the door and effort to catch a glimpse of something. Anything. And it's always a frequency that hurt. I'm starting to wonder if this was the reason that Lopez left. This kind of stuff could make one paranoid. It doesn't help that they don't tell us anything about what actually goes on here. If I were more creative or gullible, I'd say we house creatures of some kind. Now I know the rumors about the area. Aliens. Yeah, considering where I work, I'm more inclined to believe this kind of facility is up to genetic experiments of some kind. I'm not a guessing man, and I only believe what I can see. So when the whole Area 51 talk starts up, I just ignore it, as I've been here for three years and I've yet to see proof. I am, however, starting to have my doubts, as there is definitely something happening here. I punched it around 9 tonight as I went to the security office to place my lunch in the fridge. I had left over Mexican from last night when my girlfriend cooked dinner. Love me some homemade chalupas de carne asada. I passed James and asked, I thought Wilkinson had been scheduled for today's shift. James looked and shook his head and replied cynically, he was. James replied in ground tone, rough Sunday, huh? I questioned attempting to be sympathetic. Pretty shit, Anderson, what do you expect when Chuck makes you work a whole double? I kept hearing this weird noise last night, it was like, something was squeaking, something, I can't describe it. Then today, one of those packages busted open right here in the lobby. Holy shit, what did it look like? I asked excitedly. Words cannot describe, James said, shaking his head. Come on, don't be a tease, I said, hassling James. James then squinted. Tall, lanky, lots of tentacles, a face and wanted to love. Yeesh, I said, a bit disgusted. Well, have fun with that nightmare, feel. James 
responded in a monotone voice. I've said too much already. The boss made me swear not to say anything. Look, man, you can trust me. I won't say a word to Chuck. I said cheerfully, trying to take James's mind off the long and tiresome double he had just pulled. I got settled in for my night shift as Chuck walked James out the front door. I pulled out my tablet and started up the old Netflix. I had been binge-watching series while being forced to help cover these godforsaken night shifts. As I started up one of the series in my queue, I pulled out a few snacks from my desk drawer and began munching away. I pulled the same routine every night shift. I watched three episodes of something, do my rounds, enter the data, and repeat the process to lunch. Well, wouldn't you know it, by the time I get to my first set of rounds, things were off. I kept hearing this strange noise, just like James described, the clear, wet, sloppy, squeaking sound. It, it really did sound like her shoes on the mowing floor. It's the best way I can describe it personally. I kept looking over my shoulder to see if something was following me, but nothing was ever there. I repeated the process for another three episodes and then a secondary round. Once again, I heard the strange noise, but I also happened to notice a strange liquid slipping out from the bay door. I went to get a mop and bucket to clean it up, but by the time I returned, it was gone. I returned to my desk to input my data. I'm still puzzled about what that was. It was around 2 a.m. when I decided to take my lunch and knock out that leftover Mexican food. My mouth watered as I thought about that juicy, flavorful carne asada. I gave up my lunch on a quiet, empty break room and then walked it back to my desk. The whole time I heard that wet, squishy noise following me. I didn't even waste my time looking over my shoulder. I just wanted to eat. I finished my lunch around 2.34 a.m. in the morning, and then I sat at my desk rubbing my gut. I ate too much, but damn was that good. Another 15 minutes or so went by, and it finally hit me. Like the bass drop in a dubstep song, with the cool breeze on the first night of fall. I let a massive heart in this way, it was time right then and there to hit the bathroom. I grabbed a magazine on my phone, and I shuffled awkwardly to the men's room. I had a food baby that was ready to be burnt. Funny enough, it didn't matter which restroom I had chose, as nobody was here this late. But I decided just in case I'd keep to the status quo, and I entered into the men's room. I noticed once again that wet, squeaky sound had appeared from behind me. I could swear that something was following me. Man, I swear, this shift is really starting to get to me. I picked out the second stall closest to the end of the row. I don't like being cornered in case of emergencies. Or if my stall just happens to be at a TP, there's always the option that I can reach under either side of the stall and try to find some. Most of the time I get lucky. I don't have to pull the old reach around, but you never know. Just as I got comfortable on the john is when I heard the bathroom door entrance creak open. I had goosebumps. When the door opened, and a familiar squeaking noise started in. I sat in the bathroom stall nervously as the squeaky footsteps walked across to the end of the room. I was more scared now than I ever had been to let loose the massive pain air that was fostered inside me. The sound of feet bounced off the tile was something walked with purpose. I was hoping to remain hidden. Hoping was the right word as I gave birth to the remains of the double chill of the spring night from the night before. It caused a massive splash. One I could be heard as it echoed through the bathroom. The sound of that cloud could be heard as the water responded to its disturbance. The first step began to hasten and I nervously began to fart. And of course I did. Extremely 
This thing was gray, looked slimy, and had a large head with a row of six or seven eyes. Multiple tentacles hung over the edge where it gripped and held itself in place. It resembled a cephalopod, maybe a squid. Its mouth being many rows of jagged fangs, and it smelled god awful. I heard him reach for my taser in my pants belt. The skull began to rock as the creature dove head first onto me. It let out unbelievable noises and shrieks as it tried to overpower me. It used many of its tentacles to attempt to choke me and restrain me. I used my free hand to punch it, reaching for my taser. My vision started to blur. I felt lightheaded as this thing choked me. With my free hand, I poked it in two of the many eyes it had. The creature went out on a massive shriek. clearly understand what I had done for work. Its grip tightened around my neck as I went for another eye poke. This time, three fingers. After jabbing at most of its eyes, the squid-like humanoid flung itself back and rubbed its face with its many tentacles. I seized the moment to pull at my pants, grab my taser, and zap the other bastard. I pinned it down with my next I used my other hand to taste it. It flailed and twisted as it released screech after screech. I was so scared I lost myself in the moment. I didn't remove my taser until it stopped me. I... I killed it. I went back to the stall, I finished up, and then I went to call Chuck. I waited at the front door for him to arrive. He was followed by two other suits. They went to the bathroom and then ordered Chuck to detain me. He gave me a syrup and welcome and cup me. He said, sorry Anderson, I don't call the shots here at AF 51. I repeated the phrase as one of the suits standing in the neck with some kind of needle. Area 50, huh? I lost consciousness and I woke a cup to a metal table in a small light room. There was a camera in the corner and a red metal door to my left. A few moments went by and a man in a suit entered the room. Mr. Anderson, sorry to put you in this awkward spot. We need to speak to you about what you saw last night. It's my understanding of the electrocuted subject, T3E87S. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. He kind of tried to strangle me on the shitter. I replied, and more so. I understand, Mr. Anderson, but there's still the issue that the subject is deceased. You have seen what we keep here, so we need to clean up some loose ends. I've got a proposal for you that I'd highly recommend you consider. Okay, I'm not going anywhere. Feel free to humor me. You took down a very dangerous and lethal extraterrestrial. One that killed a whole team of our top scientists. Seeing this tells me you can handle yourself in stressful situations, which is something we look for here in this facility. Wait, is this a job offer? I asked confused. Well, yeah, more or less. That or we can detain you and you will live the rest of your days out in this facility as a prisoner and a traitor to your country. Well, when you put it that way, when do I start? Great, well since we're in the debrief you and explain to you what you can and can't do continuing forward. Okay, but I do have one last question. Is that thing the reason that Lopez is gone? The man in the suit just stared at me. That was three months ago. That's all the time I have for today, Journal. Next time I'll tell you about my first case and how I almost got abducted. XO, XO, Agent Anderson. Well, it looks like you survived at the end of the video. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to the story that I have written myself. If you did enjoy it, maybe consider leaving a like and subscribing. There's more spooky content just around the corner. And remember, dear viewers, you never know what goes bump in the menu. <laughs>
But you know what? But I'm going to. But I'm going to um, sit in this facility for the rest of my life as a traitor to my country and never be able to leave. Nah, nah, nah. I'm going home. So uh, that means if I gotta see that from that fucking job offer to be an agent, that's what I'm taking, bro. I am not sitting in this bullshit place for the rest of my life. Uh, that's why. No, nah, my statement with you is: it like, when, when you retire, do you ever retire? Do you? Like, can you retire at that point? Like, can you decide? I mean, would you have to sign a non-disclosure agreement or some shit? Like, I don't know. But like, yeah, like that was like that'd be like it's like that'd be more like a promotion, bitch. It's like it's like it's like a promotion, like yo, promoted, bro, or you get or you get legit fired, but worse fired because you know you're fired from your entire life. <laughs> that you've come to grown either like to or even hate it, but either one, you basically never want to see anyone after that point. If you choose option B, but um, yo, that, I think that would be a, it's a dope ass story. Um, go give my boy Bumps and I a you know subscription, subscribe to him. Don't forget to subscribe to me because you know, um, I need the subscription. I'm at two thirty two. I I need the two fifty guys. Two fifty will give you that manga giveaway. I'm aiming for three hundred subs by October. You get, I want to get three hundred subs by October, guys. You help me out, I'll be so grateful. I'll be so happy. I might even do another Q and A vid for some in some way. I might do another Q and A. I might do a live stream, an hour live stream for some way. like I don't know if I can get a, if I can borrow a computer at that point. An hour long live stream, something. I'll do something. But for that to happen, I need you guys' help. I need you guys out there to subscribe. You know, again, it's free. It's it's free. You don't have to pay money for it. It helps me out. You help out. You help out me, and that's it. That's all I gotta say. Don't forget to like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. And remember, anime and manga are forever. Yeah. 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 I said, eh, eh. I said, eh, eh, eh. Whoa. First let me hop out the motherfucking Porsche I got booty girls riding on my dick like a horse Burn figmas, I'm figmas, these people can't stop me 2D girls fucking be sent by new hobby Pull the pants to off the ship to your wife who I'm the king of this shit Wife who's rocking from the nation just to come hear me spit Got the 2D game unlocked if you ain't about this shit